Welcome to EWN On The Couch, where we catch up with your favorites both on and off the field. Now this weekend, the World Rally Cross Championship comes to an end in Cape Town. So we've got the two-time world champion, Johan Christofferson, on the couch today. The World Rally Cross Championship has traveled across the globe. 12 countries over 8 months with one champion, Yuan Christofferson, who successfully defended his 2017 title. The Swedish countryman races under the banner of PSRX Volkswagen, who are clearly a tight-knit team who strive for pole position in every race. The final race of the year takes place at Kalani Racetrack in Cape Town, where Christofferson hopes to add another podium finish to his already successful 2018 season. Thank you so much for joining us on the couch. Thank you very much for having me. You actually just arrived. Yeah, landed a few hours ago. So, uh, but it's it's all fine because there's no there's no time difference from Sweden. It's one hour, so it's yeah, no jet lag, so it's quite okay. So, what's happening after this? If you're done here, I heard you're going for a sushi buffet. Yeah, at the waterfront because I remember from last year it was very very good. So we are. So that's the meal you want. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like the the first. Th Thing I saw in front of me after the long flight here. So yeah. well, I brought you some biltong, you know, which is also very good. So that's a South African snack, in case you don't know. And he says it's nice, yeah. Very good, yeah. Yes, South Africa, go. Okay, so Cape Town, one of your favorite places. You've said it before. What are you expecting of this weekend? Um, yeah, first of all, I, I like the place. I like the the people, the weather, which is re looks to be really nice now. So uh, and then also the track was very challenging last year. So and I won the race in the end, so it was a good race for me and. Arriving here as a, as a champion already, um, I can just uh, enjoy the weekend, have fun, drive as fast as I can and see how it goes. Sounds like you know, casual weekend, just driving fast, whatever. Yeah. Two-time world champion, how does that feel? Very good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> difficult to put words on it, but uh, yeah, last year when I won my first championship title, it uh, was like a dream come true. I mean, I always, since I was a kid, wanted to be a world champion in something and it ended up to be motorsport. And then to be able to be also the first Swede ever to win two FAA World Championship titles. Uh, yeah, feels very, very good. That's very, very cool. Now, you actually only started quite late in any sport at the age of 19. Why did you only decide to start then? The thing was that my father was racing before that. And his uh, free, free time activity was cross-country skiing. So I actually, I, I as a competitive person, was doing a lot of cross-country skiing. and was in very high level in the junior in Sweden with that and then right. when, I, when I stopped with that and tried circuit racing uh, when my father stopped his career there was some, some room for me to, to try it and uh, I tried and I did quite good from the beginning and since then I'm stuck. Yeah, I mean it paid off, I'm a two-time world champion. Like, yeah, that was good, check, that's <laughs> good a, good, choice. Good, a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Now speaking of your father, he, okay you have to explain this to me, he's your spotter, what is a spotter? And is it good to have your dad as your spotter? The spotter is actually, so we are doing four or six laps uh, on the track and at one of those laps every heat you have to take the joker lap. Okay, yeah. And the joker lap is uh, roughly two to five seconds longer than the standard track to mix up the field a little bit to be able to do overtakings and so on. You can defend, you can attack with the joker lap. And we lap. as the fans love it by the way. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it keeps the sport very interesting until the last lap because uh, and then, yeah, uh, he's the one that have the like overview of the track okay. and see where my competitors are and if we should take the joker lap, if it's gap enough or yeah, and so on. If, if someone is very close behind, so I have to drive defensive, uh, if I have to catch up a little bit, so he's talking with me on the radio. Okay. Um, and there's, there's different types. I mean, I don't like to have so much information and some other drivers like to have more information. So it's a little bit different, but I've been working with my father as a spotter since 2013 and now we are getting into a good rhythm, so it's working very good. Now that's the thing, is your, um, your team is very tight, eh? lots of family connections and with Peter you have quite some banter between each other. Is, does that help? Does that benefit you as a team and as a world champion now? Uh, yeah, but I mean I, I grew up let's say in the sport in the family team yeah. with my father's team and, and Peter also has, is running his family team now with uh, his wife Panilla as a team principal and they are very keen to keep the team in a very nice atmosphere and okay. very family related let's say so even you know th when I came to the team I felt very warm welcome from the first day and so on so and I mean Petter is also 
uh, one of the best drivers I ever driven uh, with and against. So uh, it's very good to have him as a teammate because he's coming from the rally background and I'm from the circuit uh, racing background. So rallycross is the sport in between those two sports yeah. and we are putting inputs from, from each side and putting everything in one big box and trying to make the best soup out of it. So, and it worked fine. Well, so, yeah, I mean, it's a winning soup again. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's worked. Yeah. And you, you both, if you guys are racing, do you ever get to, this might sound dumb, but do you guys ever chat to each other during the race or is it like each man for himself, but you're a team? Um, we, we always try to help each other as much as we can, like on the practice and try to help with setup and driving and, and so on. And then we try to make a good planning if we are in the same heat. So try to make a good plan when to take the joker lap and what, what guys do we have to focus on? What yeah. guys do we don't need to focus on if they are ahead? Uh, but then to actually have some contact in between the cars while driving is very tricky to help each other on track. As long as we are trying to you know, keep the respect between each other and, yeah. and don't crash into each other. Normally me and Petro are quite fair on the track anyway. Sometimes of course you hit someone, but... It's uh, a competition, man. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but normally we, we try to, to have a good plan before the race. Okay, that's good. And this weekend, are you allowed to tell us what your plan is? Or you're going to find out on the day, like how the race... Because you have a, what do you call it? On the day before you have a shakedown. Yeah. We, ah, but it's, it's only to get into the cars after they be on, on the sea right here to check that everything is all right and so on before we go re get to, to race. But I mean, there's no, I think I can tell straight out on the TV what my plan is this weekend. Yeah. And I think all the competitors <laughs> knew it since the past 10 races okay, that I won. So it doesn't change. <laughs> the plan is to, to try to <laughs> do as good as I can and see how it goes. Okay, well, that's awesome. So Cape Town, what's, what's different about, um, except for obviously being in another country, another town, what is unique about this race in Cape Town? The track and everything? Yeah, f I mean, first of all, it's the last race. So it's always yes. a little bit special in terms of that. And um, I mean, the track itself uh, has a quite... Um, it's, it's quite challenging because it has some, some long sweeping tarmac corners mm. and it has some really narrow, uh, tricky gravel sections. Uh, so it's quite difficult for the, for the engineers to set up the car to be quick like the best mix of the car to, to be quick yeah. all around the track. Um, and then it has a quite good joker lap, which is quite long. That separates the field quite good. So you can use the joker lap as a, yeah, as a tactic tool. Um, so, and then, I mean, we only raced there once. So I think all the teams still have some things to learn about this track. Douglas, thank you for you guys for coming. You guys are inspiring and igniting, I think, a few youngsters to definitely take up motorsport. I think so, sport. yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so before you go, we play a little game we call Just Be Honest. Only yes or no answers. Hmm? Have you ever gotten a speeding ticket? Yes. Oh, I just had to check. Do you put down the toilet seat? Yes. <laughs> Ladies, have you ever passed out from eating too much? No. Is it true that almost every street in Sweden is named after Zlatan Ibrahimovic? <laughs> no. Christofferson, Johan. There we go. <laughs> Sweet it. Okay, do you listen to Mariah Carey when it's Christmas time? No. Honestly? No. Well, there we go. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. All the streets in Sweden, almost <laughs> certainly going to be named after Johan. So thank you so much for joining us on the couch. Good luck with the race. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Here we go. Johan, catch him in action this weekend at the World Rally Cross at Kalani Racetrack. It's going to be epic. This is On the Couch. We'll see you next time.